Hey there, this video is about pasteurization and sterilization and why some mushroom growers choose one over the other. Hey, welcome to this video on pasteurization and sterilization when it comes to growing mushrooms. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the definitions of those techniques, of course, but we'll look into way more. So we'll look at the disadvantages and advantages of each technique, and we'll also dive deep into what it can mean for your mushroom yields. So sterilization was invented in the 1860s by a man called Nicolas Appert. He's a Frenchman, and when I say he invented it, it's giving him a little bit too much credit, perhaps, because what he did was apply what people would do at a home scale to an industrial scale. So what he actually did was he would dunk in a, in a, in a vessel that's closed, he would dunk it into boiled water. And when you do that, the pressure increases so much inside the vessel that it goes beyond the boiling point of water, which is 100 centigrade. And that in itself means that the content gets sterilized, by which I mean all of the living organisms die. And that increases its shelf life, but Nicolas Appert didn't actually understand the microbiology behind this. Someone else did. Louis Pasteur, also a Frenchman, and he implied uh, what we now call pasteurization rather, and that was also meant to increase the shelf life of mainly food products. So we might frown on canned food now. Back then it was obviously a big deal because when you could keep food for longer you could feed your troops for instance and all that sort of stuff. Now these techniques are really important when it comes to growing mushrooms, but not just to extend the shelf life of mushrooms. No, it's the start of the process of growing mushrooms. That's where it really matters. And it's because the um, microbiology is really important when it comes to growing mushrooms. So what you want to do is you want to give the mycelium a clean run. And you could do that in two ways, essentially. So you can choose to eliminate all of the competitors, competitor organisms on your substrate, which is sterilization, or you can choose to eliminate most of them, and that is called pasteurization. So before we do get into any more specifics, please do consider subscribing to this channel if you are into mushroom growing and everything that comes with it, so you don't miss out on any videos. Now, back to pasteurization and sterilization. To be specific about the temperatures, sterilization means that you need to reach temperatures of at least 121 centigrade. With pasteurization it tends to be around 75 centigrade and that's obviously a big difference. One kills all the living organisms on your substrate, the other one eliminates most of them. Now back in the days when the industry started off, pasteurization was the, the, the only show in town basically. There's a separate video on the history of mush mushroom cultivation for you to check out in more detail, but Basically, horse manure as well as straw were used as a substrate for growing button mushrooms and that um, was all done in a pasteurized way. Later on, as the ind industry progressed, started to grow and more rigid um, control of environments were created, that's when sterilization really um, came onto the scene and that allowed for the cultivation of more types of mushrooms and also medicinal mushrooms, of course. All right, so what are the pros and cons of these two different methods? Well, let's start off with pasteurization. And before we talk about the benefits or the downsides to it, I'll just give you some examples of different ways that you can pasteurize a mushroom substrate because there are a few different ways that you can do it. So the way it's traditionally done in larger commercial mushroom farms, both the oyster mushrooms and button mushrooms, is in big uh, tunnels that are then pumped full of steam. So they tend to layer the substrate into the tunnels pump in a load of steam for a number of hours and that will be the way that they steam pasteurize the substrate. And people often uh, emulate this on a smaller scale just by dunking, uh, for example, straw into a barrel of hot water um, at the right temperature and leaving it in there for a couple of hours. And that's kind of the different ways that you might do it with heat. Next to that, you've got some, uh, maybe you could call them sort of chemical methods one of which is the method we like to employ, which is the lime bath method. So that's uh, basically raising the pH of the water by adding hydrated lime into the water. It brings the pH level up to around about 11 or 12, uh, pretty high pH, and then you soak the water, soak your substrate in that water, and that pasteurizes it. It kills off most of the living organisms that can't tolerate this high pH environment. So similar to how we're talking about temperature killing off organisms, you can also kill them off 
with uh, different pH levels. And most organisms can't survive a high pH environment. Uh, when you take the straw out from there, uh, the pH level drops a, a little bit and the oyster mushroom mycelium can quite happily grow in that range. And this works well for oyster mushrooms. Other varieties are uh, not as tolerant to high pH levels uh, and it doesn't work so well for other varieties. Moving on then, other methods that you can do this, similarly in how you do with a lime bath, you can do that with chlorine as well. And I know some people are gonna have some reservations about uh, working with chemicals in this way. However, the end result of it is, is a substrate that can be used under organic certification. So these are not methods that uh, create big problems in the substrate. You're not ending up with mushrooms that are contaminated in any way. You just need to make sure that your runoff from uh, the soaking method goes into mains water supply, for example, rather than dumping it out into uh, your garden or to some other wild environment. So aside from those methods, then there's some other uh, newer methods that are starting to be approached by people. One of those, for example, is to add vinegar to the water in which the substrate is being pasteurized in. And similar to the way that the high pH level works, it's thought that this lower acidity level does a similar thing in knocking out any existing organisms on the substrate before you then add your mushroom spawn to it. And then finally, another method which we employ quite a lot as well, and a lot of people are starting to use, is to use pelleted substrate. And the way that that works is the pellets, when they're made in the process of being manufactured, it happens under quite high heat and high pressure to squeeze that material into this little pelleted shape. And under that high temperature and high pressure, you get a form of pasteurization as well. And so the end material, just before you add the water to it, is already really, really clean. When you hydrate it with water, you've got a pretty clean substrate, very similar to the way you have with a normal pasteurized substrate. So those are all the different ways that you can go about pasteurizing your substrate. Let's have a little talk about the pros and cons. So one of the major advantages of pasteurizing your substrate is that it's easier and cheaper, um, especially if you're not gonna be using steam to pasteurize it, and particularly if you're using cold water methods or simply just using pellets, for example, and adding uh, water to them. This is a much simpler method. You don't need lots of equipment. It's much cheaper for the same reason. Um, and this particularly favors people that are just starting getting grown mushrooms, for example. Or if you just wanna grow in a way that doesn't involve a lot of equipment, you need a lot of space for that equipment. Uh, this can be a method that works particularly well for smaller to medium scale growers. Although having said that, we do know of many mushroom farms out there that employ pasteurized methods on a very large scale. So it's not to say you can't scale this up and. We'll come back and talk about some examples of that a little bit later in this video. Another advantage of growing on pasteurized substrate is that generally it requires lower energy input. If you're not having to generate steam for 12 to 14 hours, for example, obviously you don't need the energy input that's gone into that. And you might say, well, you know, there's probably energy gone further back in the process, either making the pellets or uh, producing the hydrated lime that goes into the water to raise the pH. And yeah, that's true to some extent, although we've done the calculations on that and it still is far less energy input that's gone into the production of your pasteurized substrate than it is when it's sterilized. So it's definitely a lower energy way of producing mushroom substrate. Uh, and then in addition to that, it also requires a lot less time. So when you're sterilizing substrate, you tend to have longer cycles where you're heating the substrate for many hours at a time and then often having to wait one or two days for the substrate to cool down to a low enough temperature that you can add the spawn. When pasteurizing substrate, on the other hand, even if you're soaking in a lime bath, the longest you're gonna wait is uh, around about 16 to 18 hours or so, so less than 24 hours to produce each batch, which means potentially you can just do one, maybe two batches per week, rather than having to do a number of different batches throughout the week if you're, say, limited in space by your sterilizer. Uh, so that's another major advantage to pasteurized methods. And in addition to that, I guess you could say Really, this is a method that's just really reliable. It works really well, it produces decent yields. It's implemented on a large scale from uh, hundreds of mushroom farms all around the world. So it's a method that both works really well, but also could be scaled back uh, to a really simple, uh, low-tech, low-cost way of beginning to grow mushrooms as well. So what are the disadvantages with pasteurized substrate? One of them is the type of substrate that you can use. So pasteurized substrate, tends to be uh, agricultural byproducts. Most traditionally that would be straw, but you can use a whole range of different agricultural byproducts and you can learn a bit more about that in our uh, mushroom substrate lesson if you wanna check that out for a little bit more detail. But it tends to be limited to uh, carbon rich substrate, uh, 
Uh, when you start adding a lot of supplementation, that tends to favour the growth of moulds. And uh, that's one of the reasons why people might move towards sterilised substrate, because they want to add more supplementation, which if you do it with pasteurised substrate, you tend to end up with higher chances of contamination. Now, the reason people might want to add more supplementation is uh, to try and increase their yields. And that's an interesting point that we'll come back to in a minute, because it's not necessarily the case that uh, higher supplementation and sterilization leads to higher yields. You can also get very good yields with pasteurized substrate, but we'll come back and discuss that in a minute. Another disadvantage to pasteurized substrate is it tends to limit the varieties of mushrooms that you grow to a smaller range of species. So traditionally that would be button mushrooms and all the different variations you have there like portobello mushrooms and chestnut mushrooms and all the different varieties of oyster mushroom which also grow well on uh, pasteurized substrate. There are some people that grow, for example, shiitake on pasteurized straw, so that's also possible, and other varieties as well, like um, the piopino mushroom can be grown on straw, but by and large, you're looking at a, a smaller range of varieties you can grow, whereas when you grow on sterilized uh, sawdust substrate, for example, you can grow a whole range of all the different gourmet and medicinal varieties like reishi mushrooms, shiitake, uh, lion's mane, maitake, and a whole range of others. So it does open up the range of varieties that you can grow. So sterilization is mainly done by means of an autoclave or pressure cookers, like the all-American pressure cookers that you might be familiar with. There's also a third category out there, and that's a steam sterilizer. Now, the important thing to realize with steam sterilizers is depending on how they're fabricated or the ones you buy, um, they might not actually be sterilizing as much as they would be super pasteurizing. And the reason is that when you use steam, it doesn't quite, um, without pressure, it doesn't quite reach temperatures of a minimum of 121. Now, why do people sterilize then? The main reasons often are that people want to add supplements to their substrate. So when you add supplements to achieve what they think are higher yields, and we'll come back to that later on in the video, often these supplements need sterilization, otherwise they promote molds. So that's a major reason. Another reason people um, sterilize, especially in commercial cultivation, is that you want to lower your spawn cost. So with sterilized substrate, it is a fact that you can use less spawn of between one and 2% rather than more spawn, uh, a higher spawn rate that you would use with pasteurization. And earlier on in the video, I also mentioned the third reason why people like to sterilize their substrate, and that is it allows you to grow a different type of mushrooms, more variety, so you can grow medicinal mushrooms, as well as more types of edible mushrooms too. So besides the fact that you need different sets of skills and you might need to put a bit of money on the line, the fact is also that autoclaves as well as pressure cookers are exactly that. They're a high pressure environment and not every grower is comfortable to use this in, for instance, their garden, um, in their garage rather, or their backyard. So it might not suit you as a person. Other people, of course, clearly are comfortable using high pressure um, equipment. So I mentioned earlier that we'd come back and talk a little bit more about yield, and that's obviously a really important topic. The reason being that traditionally people have thought about uh, sterilized substrates producing the highest yield, and that's because you can add additional supplementation, additional nutrient to the mix that enables you to receive a better yield. And whilst there's some truth to that, I think it's important to just stop for a second and think about what's being compared. So when people talk about yield, there's different ways of measuring it. And probably the simplest way is just as a percentage of the wet substrate weight. So to give an example, if you have 100 kilograms of substrate and you receive 25 kilograms of mushrooms, that would be a 25% yield. And what you see is that people that are growing on a sterilized supplemented substrate, for example, like the master's mix, which is very popular these days, a lot of people were reporting yields of say 40% which in comparison to pasteurized substrate, you know, for example, straw, where you might receive yields of 20%, 25%, 30%, somewhere in that range. Initially, it seems like the master's mix on sterilized supplemented sawdust substrate is producing a much bigger yield. However, if you look at it from the point of view of biological efficiency, it looks a little bit different. The biological efficiency is one way of measuring yield. It's basically a comparison of the wet weight of mushrooms that you receive from the substrate in relation to the dry biomass in the substrate. You know, so the, 
straw or the sawdust or the uh, soybean hulls before they get hydrated. And a 100% biological efficiency would basically mean you put 100 kilograms of dry substrate material in, you receive 100 kilograms of wet weight, fresh mushrooms at the end of it. And it's kind of seen as a benchmark, you know, if you can get 100% biological efficiency, then you're doing all right. Obviously, it can go higher or lower than that. And you might think, well, how does it go higher than 100%? Um, it can. We won't go into the detail of it today. We'll save that for a future video. But the fact is, um, you want to be able to work out how efficient your method is on this basis. Now, if we take a look at this, the main difference is in the hydration level of the substrate. So, for example, straw hydrates at a fairly high level of around about 74% water content. So that means if you have 100 kilograms of wet weight straw, you've only got about 27 kilograms, 26 kilograms in dry biomass of the straw. Now, if you compare that to uh, master's mix, for example, that hydrates at a much lower rate, around about 62% uh, water content. So 100 kilograms of wet weight master's mix is going to contain around about 38% dry mass material. So when you're comparing these 100 kilograms of wet substrate weight, they are quite different. You've got a lot more dry biomass material, a lot more nutrient there in your 10 kilograms of master's mix than you have in your, sorry, in your 100 kilos of master's mix than you have in your 100 kilos of chopped straw substrate. And so because of that, you're going to expect a higher yield from your master's mix than you are from your straw substrate. And it's not necessarily because one method is more efficient or effective than the other. It's just that you have more biomass available because the hydration rate is lower. So to give the example of a 40% yield from master's mix, that translates to be, if you have, for example, 40 kilos of fresh mushrooms from your 100 kilos of substrate, and you know that you had 38 kilograms of dry weight in that 100 kilo substrate, you're just over 100% biological efficiency. And that is basically comparable to your oyster mushroom yield. If you get 30 kilos off of a 100 kilo substrate, you're just over 100% biological efficiency since you had uh, 26 kilos of dry weight substrate that went into it. So you can see that um, at first sight, it seems like a much bigger yield with the sterilized sawdust and soybean substrate, but actually in terms of biological efficiency, it is pretty comparable. And particularly when you have got uh, farms out there getting 150 or 170 percent biological efficiency, you can see it's also possible to get really good yields with pasteurized substrate. So I really hope that with this video you got clarity on the difference between pasteurization and sterilization, and now that you have a better understanding of why some growers use one over the other. For some mushrooms, you'll need sterile techniques, and certainly for commercial spawn production you do, but even with spawn production, you can produce small amounts of your own DIY spawn in a really simple low-tech way. That's using the stem butt method, and there's a link to a separate video here if you're curious to find out more. Adam and I talk you through the, this method step by step, and at the time of recording this, we're also considering our own spawn lab again for a few good reasons. Not just because we use thousands of pounds worth of spawn each year as the business grows but also because we'd love to grow medicinal mushrooms again and of course we also want to supply people in our community of growers with high quality spawn as well it's important to realize that you don't need to grow in a very sterile way though we've been growing for many years in a low-tech way and one of the main benefits is that it's much simpler to grow in this way but it's also much easier to set up and cheaper too if you'd like to find out more about how much it costs to set up a low-tech mushroom farm then you can Here's a video for you at the end screen. Thanks a lot for watching and do subscribe to the channel to keep in touch.